Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I set up a pretty crazy course of fire for you guys today, which involves some rifle shooting, some pistol shooting, some riding of an ATV, shooting off of an ATV. And you know, in this drill, we're gonna be testing out some kit, getting some good training in, but most of all, we're gonna be having some fun. So this is gonna be a 15 minute course of fire. I'm not really sure if that's too much time, not enough time. I literally made up this drill this morning and on go, I'm gonna start off back behind the ATV and I'm going to hit that steel target down there that I painted white. After I make two hits on that steel target down there, I'm going to run over to this trench down here, jump in here, make two hits on that same steel target, get out of the trench, covered in mud, run over to the ATV, get on the ATV. I'm gonna go down the hill and once I make it down the hill, I'm gonna gauge that steel target again with my M9 hit that thing three times, go around the trail, and then I'll end up at a lake where you'll see another steel target that's across the lake. I'm gonna make two hits on that. Once I make two hits on that steel target, I'm gonna make my way around the property, back to the top of this hill, and once I get to the top of this hill, that is one round complete. So kind of like a CrossFit workout, I'm gonna get as many rounds as possible in 15 minutes. Um, you know, hopefully this goes well, and we'll talk about how it went uh, after I complete the drill, along with going over all the gear. But before we get into it, a word from our sponsors. Do you guys like guns? I like guns. And thanks to today's sponsor, Arms List, you can get them in as little as two clicks. And as long as you pay their low cost monthly subscription fee, you'll get access to tons of local deals or their extensive list of FFLs. So go check out Arms List and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. This video is also sponsored by Core Belts, excellent belts, I got a video on them, and Americana Pipe Dream. I have a link down below where if you sign up there, you'll get entered into our monthly giveaway and you'll get a chance to win a belt and a cool care package from Americana Pipe Dream. So go check them out as well. All right guys, here goes nothing. Oh.
handlebar shot, baby. Sorry guys. So how did that drill go? Well, to be honest, it went pretty good. Um, I made this drill up this morning, so I didn't really have a reference for how long I needed. 15 minutes was okay. I wish I added maybe five more minutes to it. Got one more round in there, but overall it went pretty smoothly. Um, ran into a few things, uh, starting with like on the gun. So the rifle that I used for this drill was my uh, PSA AK-103 with the SureShot uh, Mark III chassis. And this is an excellent setup if you're running a uh, red dot and a magnifier. In this case, I'm using the EOTech and this primary arms magnifier. And if you watch the video, um, this thing actually came off and thanks to my lovely wife for spotting that it fell off my gun when I was shooting up here. Um, I think it was coming loose maybe while I was riding or you know as I was shooting, I didn't have it tightened down uh, enough. Um, that's why that has these screwdriver uh, slots right here. Definitely tighten this thing down. And then I uh, realized I didn't have my multi-tool on me because 
I forgot to bring it. So um, it takes like actually bringing your stuff out to things like this to realize some of the things that you really need out there. So since the last time you guys saw this rifle, not much has changed. The only thing I have changed is the butt stock here. This is uh, from SureShot. What's awesome about this is it's not just like a buffer tube that you attach to the back of your AK because AKs don't need buffer tubes, um, but they do have attachment sets so you can use AR-15 stocks. This one's kind of like a skeletonized buffer tube so you don't have like a useless tube on the back there. It's awesome. I decided to mount the sling back here. I'm gonna actually change that up. Um, I'm more of a fan of mounting the sling back here and this thing does have slots right here or a um, hole right here so you can put your little magpul sling attachment in there so i'm going to move the sling back to here and i really what i found is when i was riding um, it's a lot nicer to kind of stow the rifle when you don't have like a sling attached right here i don't know it was kind of getting caught up on my neck a little bit and uh, i don't know it kind of sucked so i'm going to move this sling over here but overall this was actually very nice because it allowed with a little bit of a cheek riser here maybe i can get away with a maybe a taller cheek riser, but this was working out okay, where I could actually get behind the optic or in this magnifier. I don't really have to hunt around for where the eye relief is. With a little bit of a uh, cheek riser here, you can get right behind this optic and you're not hunting around for it. Even in odd shooting positions, which was really cool about this drill, is it really forced me to change up my shooting positions. And honestly, the strongest position, if you guys remember down at the lake when I was actually kind of parking the ATV nose in towards the target and I was shooting off the handlebars, that seemed to work the best. I was really struggling on the last uh, time down at the lake. It took me like maybe 10 shots. I ended up fighting through it and going into the prone, but it was really fun in this drill is just working around a vehicle like that and shooting off of it when you see a target um, just, and realizing what points on the vehicle is a stable platform to shoot off of. So quickly going over the rifle and the rest of the stuff on here, at the muzzle, I got this DTK-2 knockoff brake from PSA. I love this thing. It's really concussive, but it really makes for an enjoyable shooting experience when shooting um, you know, 7.62 by 39. Moving back here, got a Surefire Scout light, moved to a pressure pad, and on the here still have this the Somo Gear Peck, which I'm still testing out. It's been holding up pretty good so far. And then again, back here, just the uh, EOTech and this primary arms magnifier. For the pistol that I was shooting, I was just shooting my Beretta 92FS. I love the Beretta. Back when I first got out or when I was in the military, I wasn't a huge fan of the Berettas because all the ones that I was issued and have used were usually like had a train ran on them. But Berettas are actually very nice pistols. They're very reliable as well as they're maintained just like any firearm. But as you can tell, I'm a little rusty. I have been slacking guys on shooting this, this pistol here and uh, or pistols in general. Been mostly shooting rifles and playing a little bit too much airsoft. So this drill show me that I need to get back on and working on pistols again. And uh, yeah, so don't miss a bunch of shots in the first round. I recovered after that. I started hitting them every time, faster and faster and faster. Um, you know, just knocking the rust off a little bit. All right, so moving over to the helmet. Um, you've probably seen a variation of this helmet in a video prior, and this is from Protection Group Denmark. This is a legit PGD helmet, and I'm gonna be doing a video with a ballistic test on this thing, or not on this particular helmet, I'm gonna be doing it on the black one that you saw in a video prior to this. And I decided to add some paint to it, and I did add my own Velcro. This is just like Velcro you can add on Amazon because the Velcro that these things come with, I don't know, it looks a little funky to me. Not a huge fan of the aesthetics. I do like more simple Velcro stuff. Um, but overall, this helmet has been very comfortable. And the BOA system that it comes with that uh, PGD provides with their helmets, uh, this is much nicer than the one I was using prior. This is very much like a Team Wendy uh, suspension system in here, and it's very comfortable. I absolutely love this. I do like their padding as well. They do suck up a little bit of sweat, but um, on a day like this, honestly, when it's a little bit warmer and a little bit more humid out, it's kind of nice. It kind of cools your head off a little bit. But overall, this helmet has been great, and these things are made or pressed in Bulgaria, so these are not uh, Chinese helmets. Um, so I'm gonna be looking forward to doing a ballistic test on this thing. But from what I've seen on other YouTube videos, um, 
it's been doing pretty good. As far as the body armor that I was wearing in this video, you guys, a lot of you Tarkov nerds will know what this is. This is an LBT 6094 Alpha. This is kind of a more old school slick plate carrier. And I mostly bought it uh, for the Tarkov vibes. But honestly, this thing was pretty cheap off of LBT's website. Uh, originally, I saw them retailing for like 300 bucks. And I was like, I'm gonna bite the bullet on it because uh, I wanted, wanted it for YouTube videos. <laughs> and it ended up being um, half that price. They Once you put in civilian, pretty base on LBT's part, uh, drops it down to like 170 bucks. So I bought this thing and it's pretty nice. Um, I think that there are better slick plate carriers on the market currently. Uh, mostly my biggest problem with this thing is that the cummerbund, it's a little funky and it's kind of makes it a little bit difficult to put on because the cummerbund honestly just fishes right through the back here. There's doesn't attach on the back with a Velcro like most slick plate carriers do these days. It just kind of goes through the back like this. And um, it's a little bit tight too. I'm not like a fat guy, but I think it's maybe because I got the Alpha, because the Alpha is the one that could fit the 10 by 12 plates, which, which is what I'm running inside of here. Some HESCO L210s, uh, I think that's what they're called. Yeah, so um, overall, it's a comfortable plate carrier. You just kind of got to get used to the sizing. I'm used to kind of just like wrapping this thing all the way on, but I'm not really used to having Velcro off to the sides. Um, maybe there's other cummerbunds that I can replace it with, but the one that it comes with, not so great. You can't hold mags in it, but it kind of fit the purposes of what I was gonna running, uh, got this thing for, was running chest rigs on top of it. Uh, the chest rig I was using is the good old Onward Research Recce Rig. This one's in multicam. Uh, big thank you to them for sending me this thing. And uh, honestly, guys, I was talking uh, mostly for fun. I was poking a little bit of fun that the recce rig can't really hold a lot of stuff, which is still kind of true um, because it only has two rows of molly. But I did find some pouches online that really fit there nicely. These are from ATS Tactical, these vertical GP pouches. And you can fit a bunch of stuff in here. You can even fit a Nalgene bottle inside of here, which is what I was really stoked for because I will be using this exact setup at an upcoming Milsom West game, I'm gonna be doing uh, NATO cadre for Soki, which is like a once a year thing. It's my one time a year that I can go out there and uh, kill my Rust 4 coworkers. I'm gonna be wearing this rig out there. I think it's gonna be, it's gonna do fine, especially since I'm gonna be using M4 mags or M4 style like airsoft mags. I was using 762 by 39 in this rig and honestly guys, this rig is not the best for running 762 by 39. You can only hold one per cell. So honestly, I was not carrying that much ammo. So if you want a combat load of wor uh, worth of 762 by 39, you're probably better off with a different rig. But if you're only carrying like one mag per cell, um, it does all right. It's it's okay for AKs. And um, on the bottom here, I got their simp pouch with all my medical in it. And what I really like about this chest rig is that its straps or its uh, its harness system is probably, in my opinion, one of the better on the market, especially if you're running it over armor like I just did. Um, it, these things are awesome. And if you're wearing this thing under a ruck, even better. You don't have the annoying X harness like riding up on your neck, or if you're wearing an X harness over armor that rides over your neck. Um, I just like this, ch this chest rig. It's one of the more comfortable chest rigs I have. The only problem that I ran into when I was running these GP pouches on the side is it was getting in the way, especially if you run a Nalgene inside of here, of these pistol mags right here. It cleared this, um, this mag right here, this AK mag, but these two pistol mags were kind of rubbing on it. I might uh, figure out something else if I'm wearing a gun belt in conjunction with this rig and like a more sustainment setup. But that's about it, guys. That was a super fun drill. I'm planning on doing more drills like that, some more stress shoots, uh, kind of going back to the roots on this channel. I used to do stress shoots all the time. Haven't done them a ton lately, but um, I thought it was pretty fun and hope you guys enjoyed it too. But again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find school shirts and merch, which helps to support the channel. Also guys, if you wanna get involved with the channel a little bit more directly, got Patreon, got a couple of different levels on there. It'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. And I have a secret Discord chat in there where we can talk about cool stuff. And it really helps me out, helps me buy ammo, 
guns, gear, all this kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.